Okay. Um, well, I wanted to introduce Tony because he's my guest. Okay. Everybody, this is Tony Cavallero. Um, right now you see him on Righteous Gemstones, but he's he's become the guy that pops up in everything. Yes. And uh, Stop. what a journey, dude, because I always knew how talented you were. And uh, I would always be like, yeah, it's just a matter of time with that guy. And then look, the time has come and gone. And well, it's not gone, but it's here. The time is here. I, uh, you guys have seen Tony and Righteous Gemstones recently with um, Adam Devine. Yep. Divine or Levine? Uh, Levine is Maroon 5. Okay. Divine <laughs> is Workaholics. Yes. Um, he's very, he's very funny. You've also seen him in the, uh, the dirt, the, uh, Motley crew movie on Netflix. You've seen him on, I've, I just saw you on miracle workers, which I was uh-huh. so taken aback by how great it was. I how was like, fun was that? Dude, it's so fun. I thought, I thought it came on right after something. And then I just, I was already watching whatever it was. It like it had a big lead in. What was it? Was it the, the SAG awards, the SAG awards. And then I, I stayed and I was like, Oh shit, that's Tony. And then I was surprised by how well written and funny the show was. Um, Simon Rich, man, he's a genius. And then Daniel Radcliffe is the su- possibly the sweetest person I've ever met in the entire planet. Yeah, that guy's had to, he's had to have just been thrown at, like he's, he's been not given everything, but he's had such a crazy career. And all I hear is how humble and down to earth oh, the guy God. is, even though the kid is motherfucking Harry Potter. Yeah, um, and I don't like those movies, but that's that's a whole separate thing. Uh, he's great in it. He's goddamn he's, adorable in it. He's so sweet, so kind. Literally, um, like sent me an email with book recommendations last week. <laughs> what a sweet guy! And he's been doing a lot of um, like really funky, cool independent movies. Yeah, like dude. he's been making some very cool choices. Uh, he also okay. does a lot of theater, right? Who mm-hmm. Daniel Radcliffe? Yeah, yeah. Does he do, I saw him. I saw him in How to Succeed in um, Business on br- the musical on Broadway. He's done a couple, yeah, well, but he's done a cool. couple of plays too. I think. Yeah, he's beyond legit and just cool. <laughs> could not be like a sweeter man. Yeah, um, that's really, really cool. Right now, you're in South Carolina, right? And you're are you allowed to say what's going on and like what's going on with production and everything and well, we shot for two days. Season and then we two, got pushed. season yeah. two of Righteous Gemstones. Wow. So, yeah. and you're stuck got, there. Yeah, unfortunately, we're oh, we're stuck. Um, but I mean, it's great. I've got my wife and our three dogs, okay, and we live on this cool little island right outside of Charleston called Sullivan's Island. So, I mean, um, yeah. It's pretty great. Besides, I mean, some of the delusion um, that we're experiencing with these southern states with. Yeah. Let's just yeah. open it back up again. Um, oh, yeah. Are the beaches open there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. What about like your neighbors and like people on the island? Like what? what how are people treating the uh, the virus? Um, I mean, we try. We, Annie and I have kind of agreed that we're going to like stick to whatever uh, L.A. is doing. Yeah. So That's we're cool. going to kind of maintain social distance and face masks and all that jazz. Um, but, you know, I mean, I went out, um, I don't know, maybe two days ago. And I mean, it just looked like business as usual, kind of back up and, and ro- rock and rolling, you know. Have, have you guys um, known anyone that's been sick? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Our friends, um, Tom Hinkle, who actually works at TBS, um, who came out while we were shooting Miracle Workers, he, he's a good friend. And then his wife, Laura Bell Bondi. I don't know if, Jamie, do you know Laura Bell? Oh, I, a little bit. Um, but yes. I was at an, an event, like a theater fundraiser in LA the night before the lockdown happened. And she was there. And it went around the next couple of days after that. Oh shit, Laura has it and was at yeah. the event. Yeah. yeah. So Laura Laura had it. She's uh my wife her and my wife write a bunch together. So Oh uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So we know them and that was kind of like the first person I knew. And then uh Sturgill Simpson got it, 
who I had like just met at a concert right before all of this went down. And then like three days later, he had horrific symptoms. Oh, oh, really? It was bad for him? Yeah, yeah. I mean, his symptoms were bad. I mean, he got yeah, through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was kind of, I feel like, and I don't know if you all can relate with this, but like not knowing somebody with it was like, everybody was freaking out. I remember seeing a bunch of people like putting posts like, does anyone else really actually know anybody that has this? No, and, like, for sure. Once we knew someone who had it, it yeah. become like it became like a whole different thing, you know. Well, we talked about that here because I said there was a. Mm-hmm. I felt so distant from it. It was like hard to be like mm-hmm. genuinely like be, like you just see everything in the news, but you're not personally connected. It's like in yeah. your home. It's it's kind of like a mind fuck. But I feel like people are getting to the stage, and I knew I knew it was going to happen. That people are starting to kind of be like, "Fuck it, I'm going to see a couple people here and a couple people there," and like, "Yep." I mean, I want to. <laughs> so you know? I do. Like, we do, too, dude. Yeah. We're like ready. I would like just come in my backyard. We won't touch each other. Like, is that okay? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting really antsy too. I just like need to see other humans. Have you not opened up your pod, Jamie? You haven't seen anyone. Well, my mother-in-law came for the first time today in se- at, uh, Saturday for the first time in seven weeks um, because she works in a dental office and she had to get tested. So when it came back negative, my husband had her come over. Like, obviously, we want to see her. Um, and I did have a friend over in the backyard. Like they sat on the other side of like the yard. We sat on the other like we didn't get near each other, but like just drank a bottle of wine and talked which was just so nice. And it just like makes me want more. I'll, I'll come over this weekend. If you want to pick me up. Amazing. All right. Yeah. We've been doing, we've been doing people in, in the backyard. So I've like yeah. set up chairs six feet apart, but I haven't had a whole bunch of people like one, uh, like pair of friends we had come in and we just like had masks on and we chatted for like an hour and then they left. Otherwise we've just kind of, kept it within our like original pod of people still so you have, the thing is you gotta like tell if you see someone yeah you know they they had they said they're like we have to be honest we saw our other friends a couple of days ago but we were in their yard too and we're like okay but like you have to it's such a weird conversation oh, it's so, it's so weird weird it yeah. just i i i am yeah i mean and going back to gemstones i mean we were pushed two months initially but then like who who knows uh, what's going to happen? I mean, I think originally they thought maybe mid June was looking like it, and then it's like I don't think that's even on the radar anymore. And then you know I read this thing on in Deadline just about like what uh, like what the industry is doing, and right now there's no insurance that's going to cover somebody that gets sick on set. So it's like, well, unless oh, that gets yeah. figured out, then it's like. So is your plan just to stay in South Carolina until yeah, you guys chill. finish shooting? Yeah. What about, who's until, at your place in LA? Are did you sublet it out, or is it, do you have yeah, family? Yeah, we have there? a couple friends. Yeah, we have a couple friends living there in LA. Yeah. So um, are you are you there with the rest of the whole cast, or is it just you? Well, see, the thing is, my wife and I we make a road trip out of coming out here because we got our dogs. So, like, we. Last season, we drove out and made a trip out of it and then drove back and hit a bunch of spots. And we did the same thing on the way out. So, like, for us, when it all kind of came down, it was like... You couldn't run out of there. Yeah, we couldn't couldn't just hop on a flight the next day and hope that we would be okay. It was going to have to be like, go to the U-Haul, pack up a U-Haul, do, you know, hotel multiple hotel stops on the way home. It was just like what do we do? You know, yeah. you know, this situation here, we were like, I'd rather hunker down and, and hang here. I think, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I mean, can you talk, let's talk a little bit about gemstones. Cause I yeah. mean, yes. what an incredible fucking show and like, what a great fucking character you get to play. Keith. Oh, man. I mean, so just, fun. just a, and, and, and a, in a departure for like stuff I've seen you normally do, because you're very physical. I mean, there's physicality to this role too, but like Keith is like sort of, you know, here. And I've, and I see you like a lot of times, like especially um, 
your Ozzy Osbourne on the dirt and like how fucking like out there and crazy you had to be. I want to talk about that too and what the audition was like. But what was it like getting Righteous Gemstones? How did you, um, I remember you telling me like you auditioned for it and then you were like, I think I got like, it's going really good. And I, I remember like who reached out to you? How did it happen? Tell me kind of how it's been on the set. I mean, like I want to, I want to hear all about that particular show. Okay. The whole nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's, the, it's like, it's honestly not just cause you're on, it's just one of the best shows of the year or of, yeah. of that year, I think, you know, okay. and there was a lot of good TV on right now. Thanks. I, you know, you guys know, I mean, just this industry is so crazy. I mean, I did a Nickelodeon show for, I, it would ended up being like five years. I mean, we only did three seasons, but the wait to do it and everything. And, um, coming out of that, I hadn't done a pilot season in five years. And I was like, um, all right. You know, I, I had, I had worked the April before that pilot season. I did one day on the dirt. And so I was like really excited for pilot season and then nothing panned out. So I had booked one day of work from when school of Iraq got canceled in November. I worked in April and then didn't work again until I got, uh, gemstones like over a year later. So I worked one day within that mm. year period. And like after that pilot season was just a total bust, I was like, now I had this bleach blonde mullet. I was like, what the fuck <laughs> Which look great am I you. doing? Thank you. But yeah, when you have it after having normal hair for a long time, you're like, what? I... I guess I'm just going to shave my head. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And um, Annie was writing with Laura Bell Bundy. And Laura Bell had came, came over to our house and was wearing like her Sunday best. And um, Annie asked her why she was all dressed up. And she said, I just auditioned for this new show that Danny McBride's doing. I auditioned to play her wife, play his wife on the show. And Annie asked for the script. She read it. and She was like, Tony, you got to go in and audition for this show. And meanwhile, we had been, um, we had just gotten a showrunner attached to a project that we were taking out to pitch. And uh, so I kind of put that on the back burner. I was like, agency manager, I'll take care of that. And, and Annie just kept saying, you got to get in, you got to get in. And kind of originally, I was trying to get in for, you know, Danny's little brother, uh, Adam's part, because mm -hmm. I was like, well, that's, you know, that's the right fit, you know, and, and um, kept trying to get in and kind of was getting a, like stonewalled. And I was like, well, maybe it's the, you know, it's the Nickelodeon thing. Maybe they think I'm just too big for this part or whatever. And, um, and maybe that played in, but all I know is the casting director, um, has two little daughters and they had seen school of rock, the musical at the Pantages. And she was like, you know, there's a TV show based off of this. We shall watch it. And they all three watched it. And she was like, Oh, I like that guy. And then I guess my headshot came across her desk and she was like, Oh, that's the guy from School of Rock. Well, I guess just, I want to meet him. I guess just bring him in for the, the Satanist guy. And that role had originally been like a big fat guy in his 40s. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely aged up and definitely a different look. Mm -hmm. So I said, like, fuck it. I'm just going to take a big swing, kind of like I did with the Aussie thing. And that seemed to work out. And I was like, this role isn't really me, but I'm just going to go for it. And so I remember I got the audition and Annie and I were driving back down from Tahoe and we just kind of workshopped it the whole drive down and just kind of like, what if you do this character from Sunday company or what if you do this one that we did on YouTube? And we kind of melded these two characters that I had done. I had one sketch where I played this really insecure weirdo uh, who was doing a cakewalk at like a, a, a fair. And, uh, and then I did this <laughs> <laughs> series of sketches on YouTube with Josh McDermott called the insecurity guards. And, uh, we're just like these two really insecure guys. And, and I just put a Southern accent on him and, uh, you know, tucked the mullet back, wore a skin tight mesh black shirt. <laughs> you can see my nipples. And, uh, I went in and, and had a blast and, and the casting director was like, Danny literally sent me a video of an actual Satanist turned minister and you are him <laughs> like, and i was like i was like oh okay 
you know, but I mean, I didn't know. She, I was like, there's somebody that's coming in for this role that is exactly what's on the page, you know? And um, didn't hear anything for like two weeks. I heard, hey, you're in the mix. And I'm like, if I hear yeah. I'm in the fucking mix one more time in my oh, life, I don't, so I'd never want to hear I'm in the mix. Yeah. yeah. And then sure enough, I went and I tested and uh, it was Danny and Jody and John, and they were the sweetest people on the planet. And it was the most fun test experience, which can actually be a total nightmare. And then, oh, um, yeah. you know, it can be terrible. And I mean, I'm sitting oh, in the lobby. I'm sitting in the lobby at HBO. They take me to my own office. I fill out my paperwork, and then I had like 45 minutes to like do my affirmations and chill out. Never saw another actor. Went into the room and just did my thing. And I left That's there going, awesome. "Yeah, I left there being like, man, that was so fun." <clears throat> well, no matter what, that was a total blast. Like that was such a great experience. And then. We got the call a couple hours later and we're fucking sobbing and just like how, yeah, are we this fucking lucky? And and then um, the pilot was just like a dream come true. Everybody was so awesome. And I had already known Adam. I I remember when I texted Adam, when I found out he was playing the little brother, I went to bring the casting director a gift. And she's like, you know who's playing Kelvin, right? And I went, no way. And she's like, Adam Devine. And I was like... Adam's a friend. Like I texted him right away. And I was like, Hey dude, guess who's going to be your satanic best bud. (laughs) He was like, no fucking way. And, and, um, and then Edie and I have been in the groundlings together forever. And so (laughs) it was really, I mean, you talk about like, I don't know, synchronicity, the world, you know, I, every, just what a cool story. Yeah. Beyond grateful, you know? And, um, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I love that. Um, I mean, I love that how you didn't just get a random call from like your agent or manager mm-hmm. that was like, Hey, is this, there's this thing yeah. that you might be good for you kind of, you kind of went after it. And, and those are the stories I think you always hear actors, you know, talk about when they, you know, when they're so, when they're like eight seasons deep of a character and they're like, you know, I really wanted this and I went after it. It's like, uh, it's, it just shows kind of, you know, the difference between, um, somebody who's, I don't want to say somebody who's not going to make it and somebody who's going to make it, but like, it's gotta, it's gotta be a different vibe when you're walking in there for something you really, really, really want and you're going after, um, versus somebody who just got like a, an email, you know, a few, you know, 12 hours before. And yeah, yeah but there's also like, a, there's also, don't you feel Tony, there's like an energy around a role when you know, this is like, you're, you're like locked in, yeah. you know what I mean? So you've kind of, you bring something else because sometimes you're, you're like, this could really be fucking mine. Yeah. You know? I mean, and it was something that there was something so weird about it, you know, like, I don't know, just having the groundlings background and being able to create such a weird, unique, you know, ambiguous, uh, like big baby. And, and not only that, but like having a personal connection to that character as well as like the character that I did on Nickelodeon for five years, you know, like having those like similar connections to characters, but having them be so, so totally different. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it's very, yeah, it's, it was, I mean, just so interesting and, and awesome and, and, and cool to be. Yeah. To, to it's, to it's pretty clear that the groundlings like got you super ready to do not just, <laughs> not just to act in TV shows, but I mean, it seems like it had like a, just a transformative effect, like on, on your life and you as a person. And when I met you, you were still going through the classes and stuff. And then like you made Sunday company and then like, I mean, I, I, I can't really, I don't know what the odds are or like what the percentage of people that like take the first class at groundlings versus the people that make the Sunday company, but it's gotta be like a tiny, tiny, tiny. I think it's like something like 3%. I mean, yeah. 3% of people that start there. Is that the hardest you've worked is uh, at the groundlings, like as far as the amount of work that's going in on a weekly basis to make the Sunday sketch show every week 
And do you think uh, everything else is super easy peasy compared to that now? Or is everything kind of a challenge in its own right? I was so in the zone there. Like, you knew, dude, like I was a janitor. Like I was, I was paycheck to paycheck. That was like the release. That was mm-hmm. the escape. That was like my lifeline. If that didn't work, I didn't have a backup plan. So for, and, and it was, and it truly brought joy. Like I, I looked forward to being, to having the most, to bringing the most sketches in to pitch night. And because I found out pretty early on in Sunday company that like some of my ideas were just shit. And so I had to use kind of that shotgun effect and see like, let's just do a scatter and see if anything sticks you know, and so I ended up bringing in like six to 10 sketches a week. And, um, you know, luckily, like that, that period of time was such a sweet spot for me. Like that was like, uh, such a dream. So like, when you say work, I'm like, yeah, I was working my fucking ass off, but it was so fun. Mm -hmm. I like thrived in that anxiety and excitement of getting to like, what's going to get in the show this week? What am I going to have to costume? Which character am I going to have to create? You know, like that was so um, exhilarating and, and fun for me. And like definitely my highlight of, of, of the Groundlings experience and not only Sunday company, but, you know, testing for SNL and then on top of everything, you know, getting to meet my future wife, Annie in my second six months. That's right. Yeah. You met her at the Groundlings and you guys have been married for how many years? We'll have, um, We'll have five years in August, bro. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. You guys have one of those um, like relationships when like I see on Instagram and I'm like, they can't love you. They, they don't love each other this much. It's like, it nah. does, doesn't nah. seem, nah. but it's like you guys are working well, we signed out together. A contract, you yeah. know, we signed a contract. So we got to be funny and pretend to care. Right. Uh, well, you do a you great know. job of it. You pull back that curtain, bro. Yeah, and it is just hot coffee getting tossed. Yeah, yeah well, back see, and forth. <laughs> well, do you run into issues, especially now that you guys are like indoors all day together? I mean, uh, I, would be I have never I felt more connected me. with my wife than during this period of time. More on the same wavelength, like mm-hmm. loving and caring and give and take. It's been totally amazing. And, and like, we, we already had a great foundation, you know, of course I'm joking, but like, you know, and that was kind of the thing with the groundlings is we kind of got, you know, uh, run through it. You know, we were in such an intense experience right off the bat. And I mean, kind of, I'll never forget when it was like the night we like, we, we went to dinner and I said, this is a professional experience. Our careers are on the line. I don't think we should do this. And then we went back to her place. We watched Romeo and Michelle. And then we made out for like three hours. And I was like, she was like, are you sure? And I was like, maybe this can work out. But, <laughs> 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 but we both agreed right then. And there we were like, no fucking dr- We can't have any drama. That will ruin both of us. And it's me and you, like, this is it. Like we're going steady. That's it. And so, you know, and, um, kind of just stuck to those, stuck to those initial, uh, guidelines. (laughs) And it, yeah, you guys were in a, like a trauma together, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, man. You know, nothing like a little trauma. It sounds like the opposite of Kasim and his girl. Yeah. Yeah. We had, uh, you know, we had none of that sort of like bring you together and um, we are are barely keeping our heads above water right now. <laughs> it is every day something new are is going you, wrong. Are you washing the dishes? <laughs> oh, that's not a problem for me. <laughs> Good. So just I keep your mouth I shut. My voice down. Yeah, I got to keep, just keep your mouth shut. shut. I think your cat was sitting on the couch with his girlfriend and he's looking at, at Tony's Instagram, just giving <laughs> an eye to eye, like, why can't you be more like this? <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah, that's the dream right there. <laughs> yeah, dude, we've been doing these dance classes together every day. Did I saw that. that? <laughs> dude, I saw that. Yeah. Yep. Who cuts your, so you're not cutting your hair. You're not doing, you're not, you can't. I mean, that's as long as it's been in a while. Yeah, this is, I mean, it was Keith hair 
They yeah, there it is. It, but it's uh, it's growing back now, and then you know it's the tips are super blonde, and then the roots are dark for the kids. That is guy. very. It is the exact Kato Kalen hair. Yeah. <laughs> it's very shampooed and conditioned right now. Usually, That's I like cute. to have a little more um, Bodhi from uh, Point Break and a little less yeah. Kato. Uh, you know what I mean? The bleach, <laughs> yeah, the sun bleach tips. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. What was, I, I don't think I've asked you like how your SNL auditioning experience went. I mean, it seems to me like, uh, was that a recent within the last couple of years or was that before? 2011, bro. Oh, dude. That yeah. was a long time ago. First six months in Sunday Company, I, 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 they came and scouted me at the Groundlings and they were like, we, we like the joy that that guy has on stage. And then I went out and they were like, we're not sure where we would put that guy. He's not Farley, but he's not Phil Hartman. And uh, we don't know, but we like him. So that was kind of the feedback I got. Dude, it was so surreal. Again, I just had such a blast. It was so fun and um, such a interesting experience. But that, again, like... I think do they come to your Sunday company shows to like scout you there and then bring you to New York or yes, like, do they exactly. just come? Yeah. So Lindsay yeah, yeah. Shokas, who's an executive producer there now, she would come to the Sunday shows and sit in the back. And I had had no idea she had come that one night she came and, and she'd come out a couple times a year, but usually we'd hear rumblings or somebody would see and there'd be right. whispers backstage. But that was one of those nights where I don't think I had any like crusher sketches in the show. And, I actually like flubbed something in a sketch and like broke and kept breaking like the whole sketch. And then just dug that I was just being a fucking goof and breaking the whole time. <laughs> Which, mm-hmm. I mean, it isn't super professional, but for whatever reason, I was just having fun, you know, right? And, you know, I guess that was attractive to them. And, and um, so I got to go out there and test and then I became super obsessive with that for like the next two years and kind of let it, marinate like oh my god this is the thing it's meant to be this is what i was always meant to do and then you know i let that really cloud me and 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 fuck me up you know for like yeah. for at least two pilot seasons i mean i had a rough time that was like my first real audition for any kind of a tv show i was so green and then you know yeah. once you go out there and test for something like that they bring you back and they're like put audition him for every pilot you know what we want to see him for every, every male role, every male comedic role. And I would just show up in the room and, you know, I, Hey, I'm reading, for, I'm reading for Doug. Uh, you know, I mean, just no choices, no confidence. And, uh, I mean, that, that was like, I remember, I think it was the season, the pilot season after that, I like left a, a producer session and called my manager and I was like, I think I got to take a break. I don't know if acting's for me. Uh, I really hate these experiences. And that had been like my first producer session. And I knew I had gone in there and blew it. And we'll never forget, forget um, the paper shaking in my hand. And while I'm on the phone confessing this to my manager, I get a call on the other line and then uh, it's my agent. And he's like, hey, Tone, guess what? You got to go back in. You're going to do a chemistry read with Ellie oh. Camper. And I'm like, Oh, nice. Oh, so nothing makes any fucking sense at all. <laughs> yeah. I, it's just like, Oh, okay. The sooner I can embrace that nothing makes any sense yes. whatsoever, the yes. better off I'll be, you know? Is that your experience, Jamie? Uh, I'm just, I just feel like I'm having like aha moments right now. Like, I think you're like, you're literally like, you're verbalizing things I've been feeling, but just haven't been able to like make a like solid point. And you're just doing that for me. And I really appreciate it. Nothing fucking makes sense. That's the key. That's all I got to yeah. go with now. Yeah. That's the best. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, for me, honestly, it's been at least in these last few years with like Ozzy school of rock gemstones, like the three, you know, the three big ones for me have all just been taking huge swings for the fences and being carefree, fun to be around and joyous. 
in the moment and like, and like yeah. you said and, you, you, enjoy, you, and you enjoyed yourself and all of the even the auditioning process and that's what it is that's what you got to show up with it being right like i'm here to have a good time i remember that yeah. actually something jim told me Gandolfini was like when i was like nervous about auditioning again and he was like that's your time in there like you're not that's not their time they're lending you like that time you earn that time it's like you bought that time like own that time and i always try and remember that good advice it's true when we had you go in and have fun when we had aida totoro on this show played uh our our aunt on uh sopranos she said my audition is just the beginning of my wonder <laughs> that, that no she yes. said she said she wasn't going to memorize any lines without being paid she's like i'm not memorizing my lines for my audition they're not paying me <laughs> what she said exactly was i hope they don't expect me to memorize lines or perform <laughs> i love it i love it okay there was um so I want to know, I mean, we've, a lot of people have seen you in, in the dirt as Ozzy Osbourne, famously snorting ants and uh, showing your butt, maybe butthole and back sack. I don't know. It was pretty, it was pretty graphic, but you're, and I can't even in Rachel if the whole Gemstones, hole made it. well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but like you are, um, I mean, your I mean, look, look at your Instagram, your body's a wonder, but like, uh, is that are you super comfortable just being just about fully naked uh yeah. as often <laughs> as possible yeah anybody yeah. that's seen me at the ground legs is like yep that's his sweet spot like <laughs> <laughs> and even just, my college my college roommates are just like i knew it yeah. I, knew it when, I knew it when he was doing fucking naked cartwheels in the shower that this that's guy funny. His ball sack was going to fucking make it in an episode two of the Righteous Gemstones. In your audition for Ozzy Osbourne, because you did, do you take a chance in audition tapes or in the room and and um, pull pull your your ass your asshole out for the casting director Hell ever? Yeah, or you put fucking, yourself on tape like that? Yeah, it's fucking Jeff Tremaine, dude from Jackass. It's oh like, yeah, well he'd love oh, it. Oh man, he's seen a lot of holes. The more, yeah. yeah. I mean, if I can get the B hole in there, and then you know the the under scoop, nacho <laughs> region, and then maybe like a little bit of bubble gum, yeah, dude, you know. <laughs> So, so do you do you prep for that? Like, are you like, I want, I want a uh, bald ass. I want three day growth. I want do. What do you do there? <laughs> Nothing, dude. I just, I just, I wing it, man. Like, like so. Ozzy, Ozzy was. I never done an Ozzy Osbourne impression. I just watched some videos of him in the eighties, and we just uh, Annie put me in a dress and did some makeup on my eyes. <laughs> And put a bunch of jewelry on my hands and we sent in the tape and I didn't hear anything. And then like three weeks later, I got the call. Hey, uh, they want to have a director session with you. And I was like, oh, fuck, my in-laws just booked this trip to New York. We're all going. It's like a Christmas time trip to New York. There's no way I can bail. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to make it in thinking like they're going to see a bunch of guys. I'm not the guy. I'm not a fucking professional Ozzy Osbourne impersonator. And then they call back and they were like, well, we're in, when you're in New York, would you do a Skype session with the director and the producers? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's a great sign. So they're interested. But I mean, dude, I was like full, <laughs> full ass up to camera and my my uh, <laughs> my in laws are in the room next door, and and like I had like six producers and the director all on Skype with me, and the casting director. And I mean, I straight up had you know, dude. Like <laughs> I'm using my hands as a butt, but you know, I mean, I was like, hey. oh my god, is that what your experiences have been, Jamie? <laughs> oh, of course. I dropped trow whenever needed. Wait, you guys you guys didn't even say how you guys know each other. Me and Tony? Yeah. We yeah, yeah we Oh man, dude. Dude, t we we went back to the old days of YouTube where Tony was like um me and Tony were both friends with uh a guy oh, Corey Williams. Williams who made YouTube videos and I think I don't know how you met him but didn't he just like 
cast you in a thing and you were local, you were in like, you got to watch it, bro. It's still online because I found our first thing we ever did together in like 2008. Uh, I, I, I can't watch myself. You can't watch it, that, but it's something part. about, um, it, we were doing championship gaming series. I did a set of commercials for this video game show on di the direct TV channel. And they wanted to do a viral campaign. It was like the first time people started dipping their toes into viral campaigns. And they were like, well, we know this guy who did a cat video that got like 20 million views. So let's bring you over to this guy. And we shot some dumbass videos and cast them like, you're the best buddy of Corey who's playing video games with him. And then I end up training Corey as this weird Jack Blackish blue ninja who's like the ninja yeah, yeah. video game trainer. Oh, I, I remember this. You remember yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, and you were working at Best Buy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I got to see these. My God. Is that when you were living with Gavin? Uh, it, it may have been. Yeah, it may. I, I might've been. So, so That's me and yeah. So we have a connection from way back in the day is that her husband, his brother, I used to live with. So we're basically family. You got my husband drunk for the first time, right, Cap? Well, I I didn't say it wasn't just me, but I wasn't. I was there, yeah, feeding him beers for sure. Yeah, Miller Lights. Well, you did um, good. He can literally drink thirty beers, and I can't tell that he's even <laughs> tipsy. Uh, like he'll walk yeah, in a room and be like, "I'm sorry, I'm so fucked up, Jamie." I'm like, had no idea. Yeah, yeah, he holds it together well. Yeah. Um, there was, you know, the other thing is like, even when you were at the groundlings every week, uh, and like you, you were working, um, a job and you were doing the groundlings, you would still like, and me and you talked about doing a bunch of sketches. You were like, Hey dude, like, what are you up to? Like, do you need any help with anything? Like, can't, you know, should we do something? Like, I was always like, how does this guy find the fucking time? Like I can barely, you know, find the energy to like, I could barely do like, a a, a one YouTube video a week. And I, you know, I was always yeah. very impressed with how much energy you had, but also like your, your business sense, your show business sense was always like really good. You know, like I don't like calling people hustlers cause I feel like that takes away from them being actually talented, but your show business sense was like so spot on. You knew exactly kind of like how to take yourself the next level you knew you had the goods you're just like now i just gotta like you know i was always it, like, i mean well youtube i had such a great experience with that and like i got a manager from just doing youtube videos before i yeah. got into the sunday company and i met you and gallagher and Corey and all these random people and that was right when you were doing did you join the station or were you there after the station yeah 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 i did i was there yeah and then yeah. I met Shane and all those guys. And I was like, I don't want to lose that connection through that experience because I felt friendships and moderate success through that. I'm like, what if I could combine, you know, the YouTube experience and the characters I'm doing at the Groundlings. Uh, but eventually the Groundlings just, it, it became too, too much to continue to do. Cause I was doing, you know, like you said, I was doing two videos a week on YouTube for like two years. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Just, I don't know how yeah. you did it, but you'll still do stuff with the ground links, right? You'll do mm -hmm. like reunion yeah. shows or I, I don't I'm know. What still, I'm still on the main company there. I'm still an active yeah. main company member right now. So whenever you and Annie, like whenever they ask you, you come out maybe a few times a year and do a show or. Is yeah, I mean, or? as a regular groundling, I'm supposed to go and do a three month run a year, Friday and Saturday. So oh, they got months. rules, oh, cool. huh? Oh, wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. I did one as soon as I got back back from Gemstones last July. So I'll be up again. I mean, you can do them any time of the year, but um, I'll probably do one when I go back or have to make a choice whether or not to stay in the company or not. But um, yeah they're still a blast, man. It's just that, that Sunday company experience of like the hustle, the, that Saturday night live vibe, whereas the main company, you, 
write stuff for five weeks and then the show gets set and you do the same show for three months. Whereas in the Sunday right. company, the show's different every weekend. Which one, which do you prefer? I love the different every weekend, man, because mm. you could do like, if you had a sketch that was bomb, that was awesome. You could run it for like three weeks max. And then you'd be searching for the next hit. You'd be hoping that you could pull another awesome one out of your ass. You know? Yeah. Did you ever do any long form improv? Yeah, I had a long form group for like nine years with Josh. Was that McClure Robert that. Downey Jr. Jr.? Yeah, and Fortune Feimster. And I mean, another just amazing group kind of ahead of its time. And, and uh, we had so much fun. And I mean, that was actually how I got my agent. We did a show in Westwood. And um, there was a little place called the Improv Space. And there were six people on stage and four people in the audience. And <laughs> one of the people in the audience happened to be friends of a friend of one of the cast members in the show and also an assistant to Bob Gersh at the Gersh Agency. And oh, nice. she came up to me afterwards and was like, I'm going to see if maybe my boss will take a meeting and blah, 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 blah. And it, was, it ended up working out. She's been my agent now since for like eight, nine years. Oh, good. So cool. Another cool story. Yeah. Does being uh, an Eagle Scout give you that crazy work ethic? Um, somewhat. I had a really active assistant scoutmaster dad that helped with a lot of things. I would say probably the discipline of doing Taekwondo probably, you know, lent itself. And then I did football, wrestling, and lacrosse in high school. I was like a total jock. And then... Yeah, ended up going to this crazy military college. But, you know, all of that stuff kind of lent to the, the discipline aspect of, I guess, you know, that I, that I kind of hold on to. Yeah. I feel like growing up in New York City, like you see all that like Boy Scouts and all that stuff. And you're like, oh, these fucking guys. And then you grow up and you're like, man, I, what was I thinking not fucking learning all that stuff? Like I <laughs> I had that now, you know? I, I totally get that because like when I got to high school, I'd say like half of my scout friends were like, boy scouts are for fucking nerds. And I was like, forget that, man. I'm going to be the cool boy scout. Like every picture day, even in fucking high school, I'd show up with my short shorts and my fucking scout socks <laughs> in full boy scout uniform. And I'd be like, fuck yeah. Huh? That's right. Fucking Boy Scout Supreme. And, uh, and, my, and my dad actually, I mean, it was a really cool experience because my two best friends were scouts and then my dad organized the trips and he hated his job. He worked construction. And so his like life purpose then became like, let's have the fucking most fun when I can escape and do scout stuff. So we did like whitewater rafting and spelunking and mountain climbing and winter camping and, and all the ski trips. We did all kinds of really fun stuff. And it was cool to get to experience that, you know, with my dad and my brother too. So that kind of stuck me in there. Cool. God bless Tony. I mean, there's, um, <laughs> I, you know, there's, there's just so much you've done and, uh, you know, it's, I, I think I said this when you were on my old podcast, but, uh, it's great when, great people like achieve success, you know, cause yeah. it, so often we can fall into that sort of like, um, Disneyland of despair in our minds where we're like, dude, fuck that guy. Like, I can't believe that guy got this thing. Or he's like, he's the one that like, and you know, and it's like, if, if, if people like you didn't get success, I would spend all my time hate, like <laughs> resenting and hating. And you know what I mean? And it's so nice. Uh -huh. It's so nice that, you know, it's, it's, it can work, you know, it yeah. can work if you're talented and you work hard and it's, um, it's really nice to see, uh, and, and like being able to like be your friend, but also just be a fan and just see like all the cool stuff that you're doing. And, uh, you know, well, it's I very, can't... it's very sweet, dude. But like, I mean that, and, and I, I take all of that to heart and we've known each other for so long, but I mean, you were there, dude, when it was like shitsville and i mean you yeah. know where it's it sucked man and it was just like what am i doing what is the 
point of this. I've got no other place to go. I'm a fucking janitor that's getting threatened to be fired every day I show up to work. Like, and I mean, you know, the thing is, uh, there is hard work in there, but it doesn't take away from like, you know, I still wake up, you know, mornings and feel like a piece of shit and I don't deserve totally. it. And I, you know, I'm not going to get this. And it, when is it all going to come crashing down? And, and, uh, how am I going to fuck everything up? And, you know, that's when I've got, you know, a good support system to call and be like, no, dude, you worked hard. This is cool. Enjoy it. You know, cause shit's going to hit the fan eventually. Something's going to go wrong. You're going to have to deal with that. So just enjoy yeah. the highs and, and, um, and remember them when you hit the lows, you know? Yeah. When you say you wake up and feel like, oh, I'm a piece of shit and that, like, what do you think you could do better? Cause from an outside perspective, it sounds like you do everything perfect. <laughs> I could write a script. How about that, dude? Like, <laughs> write a script. I've been reading so many books. I haven't, <laughs> I wrote two paragraphs so far in this like five weeks of quarantine. And I'm like, I've got three ideas that are just sitting there ready to go. Like, just sit down and write something, bro. Or, uh, you know, why, why haven't I come up with some genius idea to raise a million dollars for like direct relief for the CDC or something, you know, I mean, yeah, you, and those are big, how, those are big, you know, big, yeah, yeah, big. Yeah. Things. You haven't figured out quite how to be like a saint yet, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you're doing you, you, what do you, what do you want to, what's a project? Like if you could get financed tomorrow, you know, is there something that you've always wanted to do or just like, maybe don't have the time to do right now or um, not I'd love to right produce now. something that my wife and I wrote together and could star in together. I think you guys are so annoying, dude. You guys are so fun. annoying. And then selfishly, I really want to play a pro wrestler from the, the early nineties. Fuck yeah. Well, you did, you did a sketch. Uh, I remember like, I, I, I remember vividly, I don't know if it was a Sunday company or if it was like a sketch that you did or YouTube videos, but you played a crazy wrestler guy and it fit because you have the body. I was, you like, have, it was, was it the one where I was just falling all over the place? It was very physical. <laughs> That's what I, I remember. Yeah. 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 I mean, you, yeah. you, you, you embody that persona, I think so well, I, I would Thank love you. to see, I don't know why you're not in glow on Netflix, even though it's probably because you're not a woman, but however, I feel like you could play a great character on that. All women probably, cast. I probably could. Um, I don't know dude, <laughs> if we can just get the casting director to go see School of Rock and the Pantages. Dude, I'm telling you, Mr. Perfect, Ravishing Rick Rude, Rick yeah. Flair. Yeah, I mean, hey, Rick. Lex Luthor, dude, <sighs> Ultimate Warrior. Oh, you are ultimate uh, warrior. I think that's what that character that you dressed up like gave me very <laughs> ultimate warrior, warrior vibes. vibes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really, honestly, I'd love to have like a career like um, Kurt Russell had, dude, where he got to do like comedy and then like cool dramatic shit and all this. He was like John Carpenter's muse for years and then got to shoot all kinds of stuff with his wife, Goldie Hawn. Like, yeah. what a cool career that guy had. Totally. But I'm loving where I'm at right now, man. I'm just kind of like, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing because it ends up working out really rad and I end up falling into really fun stuff and getting cool opportunities. So, you know. Well, I, you know, you're always, uh, you always respond to a text when I send it to you. You're you're just a reliable guy. You know what I mean? And it wasn't uh, always bro. I, I, but I know that, you know, I know that we've both been through some stuff and even Robert, you know, there's some certain times in your life. Some of the least reliable people in that I've known have now become the most reliable people. It's so funny how that works. Yeah, what and also I know some people that died, but uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's not funny um you know but it's 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 crazy that when you mix you mix the right program with the right person at the right time and you can really transform uh somebody who like looks like they wouldn't last a year into somebody who's just like achieved all this and picks up the phone when you need them and uh 
And you've done that for me a couple of times. So I, I appreciate you in that sense, not just the, the, the acting and the, and the comedy and all the, the history online we have just as like a person. Thanks bro. Yeah. And I love hey. your body. You've got Thanks, it all. Man. Thanks dude. Well, it's been really tough in the quarantine. I'll tell you that much. I'm really just chasing, uh, chasing to counterbalance the calories that I consume. Uh, I have yet to work out once in like two months, in two months of quarantine. Well, you look fantastic. Everybody looks beautiful tonight. Everyone looks super fantastic. Real slim, trim. I showered. Lean, I showered. That's healthy. always my win. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Has yeah. anybody been experimenting with cold showers? Yes. Have you really? Well, I Cutter and I got hooked on that like goop, you know, uh, like thing. Yeah. Uh, he has been telling me about Wim Hof forever. Yep. But and like always sending me his videos, being like, Jamie, you got to fucking breathe. You got to breathe. Like if I go in our history, you'll see how many he sent me over the last few years. So when there was an episode, he's like, Yes, Jamie, you have to watch it. Anyway, long story short, I do turn the shower cold for the the last minute uh, that I shower. Nice. So the idea behind that is to what, like have your body get used to being uncomfortable and like working through that discomfort. I think it's, I think like, it's all about like having you, you be more in balance and like, I live very much in fight or flight a lot. And so when I get shocked and can work my way through something to like that calm piece and like my meditation anywhere, it gets me out of that state it's so infrequent because it's like how I live right now, but I'm trying to do as many things like to, to combat that. See, yes, I'm, I'm looking here, lowers damaged tissues, temperature releases endorphins, constricts the blood vessels, reduces swelling and inflammation, stabilizes blood pressure and relieves muscle spasms. I did. A, I do like a like in the last seven years. I've tried to push myself out of my like comfort zone, doing all these things like making my bed in the morning, meditating every day, working out, all this stuff. It's like I tried the cold shower thing once, and I was like, "Fuck!" This. <laughs> like I just I, I, I can't. I'm very sensitive to like hot and cold, especially with water. Like I can't. Like I I've, I've tried to take shower with girls before, and it just doesn't work out. Because I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't even do like semi hot water, you know, or like, it's like, there's like one temperature I live at and it's just lukewarm. I get it. Ooh. I get it. Yeah. I, I, I can't do, I can't do cold. I can't do hot. Well, come on over, dude. I've got a chest freezer in my backyard that I sealed up with silicone that I keep filled with water in between 30 and 50 degrees that I go and sit in it for three minutes. So how long have you been doing that? And what are, what are the things that you've noticed? Like, you know, if I were to start doing it, what, what would I be able to look forward to as like physiological changes? <laughs> so, um, after I stopped drinking, I got addicted to running marathons. So I ran like 11 marathons and then I fucked my knees up <laughs> and I've got torn meniscus in both knees. So, I started kind of experimenting with this cold plunge stuff. And for me personally, it's just like any other addict thing. It's the rush. It's the mm. rush. Like the euphoria after sitting in for three minutes and then like the next 20 of just convulsively shivering and feeling fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So after you get out, you feel you get like a, a rush of endorphins. Yep. And so there's an actual thing going on in your body, but for, but you've got, in order to get that sort of high, you've got to endure three, three minutes of absolute freezing cold water. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know, Tone. I think you would, I think you would, anybody that like I did, anybody that like my brother came for Thanksgiving and he did it and, uh, and then I have everybody do it and they come out and they're like, I feel great. I feel great. It's like in um, it's like in Big Trouble in Little China where they drink that that serum dude from uh, what's his name? You know, um, he's got the thing, and uh, they just uh, they all are talking about how fantastic. Guy? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, 
Look, um, I don't know if I, I have it in me to go get a chest and keep cold. If I were to keep it with freezing cold water, but if I were to take a cold shower, what do I got to do to get some sort of benefit? How long does it got to be the coldest it can be? No, I think you can Google it, but a cold finish is what it's called. And you do Hell like 30 yeah. seconds and then you build up to a minute and then you try and do three minutes and just as cold as your shower can go and just, you'll get great. I think you'll get great results out of that regardless, but. Mm-hmm. You, know, well, you, had, you had me at like a buzz, you know, if there's a way I can get a buzz. Yeah. Out of, that's why I'm like all in, I'm all in on coffee. I'm all in on like video game, anything that gives me a little buzz without having yeah. to like relapse. I'm all for it. <laughs> Just give me that little buzz, you know? Do you do any other like stuff like that or like out of the norm kind of things to? Um, I drink a gallon of water a day. How many times you go on peepees? I go peepee. I go peepee a lot. It's a lot of peepees, you know, especially because I'm wearing uh, a sh- shorts with Velcro and a, t- and a drawstring tie. To get in and undo the drawstring and Velcro every that's a lot, that's a lot of work for, yeah, but it keeps water. your skin clear, helps you lose weight, makes you feel more full. I even have a little hack where I have like a 24 ounce water right next to the bed and I'll set my alarm for a half an hour before I'm supposed to wake up. And so I do that. I wake up, I take my multivitamin and I drink that whole 24 ounce of water and then I go back to sleep. And then I wake up when I'm actually supposed to wake up feeling much more refreshed than I usually Wow. Do. 24 ounces. That's more than I drink a day. <laughs> That's a That's Mountain Dew saying. and a half. <laughs> yeah. I do, gallon, I do the gallon of water a day. And I think the best part is like when you eat like shit, it really flushes out the salt and the sugar. And, the, and it's like, if I don't do it i you see it like i notice right like out of the last hundred days i've probably done it 99 and that one day you're like oh my god yesterday i just fucking forgot and you're like and going to the bathroom is not to say like it just it, it's crazy yeah i agree completely good job rob guys pick it up um okay tone thanks for coming look i'm gonna plug your socials right now here's uh tony on Instagram, everyone, at Tony Cavallero. You've got the Ozzy Osbourne mullet there. Is that yep. the same thing on Twitter? Yep. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show and like yeah. for you to uh, come on and spend an hour on our tiny, small little podcast. But you guys both have HBO shows, so I think there's some sort of commonality there. That yes, works. 100%. And Jamie, if you like Goop... You should check out our podcast. My wife created it. She plays a Gwyneth type of character. It's called Slop Stop the it. Podcast. Yeah. Slop, is it? Slop yeah. the Podcast. Yeah. Does she play a character, like a, a Gwyneth character? And yes. it's all And it's improvised? all improvised. Yeah. Right. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm looking hilarious. it up right now. Yeah. Slop does, the Podcast. Does HBO still treat their people amazing? Well, say it again, dude. I said, does HBO still treat their people amazing? I mean, Jesus, bro. Incredible. Well, hold on. Nickelodeon or HBO? <laughs> Dude. Let's- that's, like, that's like saying Sun Valley or <laughs> Bel Air. <Right. laughs> like the Sun Valley, the square footage that you're going to get, though, for that dollar. <laughs> uh, um, yes, man. They are... The most incredible company to work for ever. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah they're always the best. Oh man. Um, all right, buddy. Thanks so much for the time. Um all right. everyone, check out season two of Righteous Gemstones sometime between now and 2021. 22, probably. 22. <laughs> <laughs> and uh we can you can watch you on uh, the dirt. Yep. on Netflix right now. Yep. Um, you can stream. If you've got kids, School of Rock is an incredible show. It's on Hulu um, streaming. And on Hulu awesome. on streaming. I'm going to show it to my kids tomorrow. Oh, they'd love oh, it. It's, it's a very, would it's love a very it. good show. And uh, and Miracle Workers on TBS. Yep. Um, and yeah, man, I, I keep going. Keep, keep going up and up and we'll watch you and wish you all the best. And hopefully all you'll right. come on soon. 
All right, guys. Lots of love, Cassim. Good night. So nice to meet you both. Stay safe Bye. and healthy, everybody. Thank you. Thank you Bye. So much. Love you, bud. Love you, bud. Bye, guys. Okay, guys. We'll see you next time. See you next time. You guys yeah, follow us on Instagram at pajama pants and uh, and uh, keep uh, keep sending us those emails. I think we got to do just a whole show where we read emails, you know, to catch up. Yeah, we gotta we're, do re we're really behind on that. Yeah, we're sorry. So. Keep on rocking in the free world and do 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 do. What Il is that from something? Little Nardwar. What? Uh, what? Oh, God damn it. All right. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button um, and the notification bell so you'll know when these uh, pop up on YouTube. Thanks, guys. Appreciate one, all the support. One person will get that reference, by the way. Okay. Well, that's yeah. all you need. Not here. That person's not here right now. Okay. Bye. <laughs>